All truth is not kind to hear. There's a bitter truth as well as a sweet truth. Jesus said in John 8.32, you shall know the truth. And there's one thing about the truth, it will make you free. And the first thing you need free is your mind. All right, Shalom, 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 Israel, scattered in the diaspora. This is Pastor Dallas, straight with you, the radio broadcast. Um, man, I, I tell you what, I am so glad, and I have not had time, as usual. It seems like it's a story of my life. Things do slow down a lot in the winter, but, you know, my plate has really been extended a lot. Uh, not only do I have the cares of the community here, and the logistics of it and what's going on and the ripping and the running and the building and the process and and the planning and all this other stuff is going on and running of the ministry and the answering the emails and telephone calls and and stuff. I got uh, the situation down there in Georgia where we are getting close to actually purchasing some land and putting a, 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 a nice big trailer out there on it and and of course, I've been ripping and running. I've been to Georgia a few weeks ago, and I'm going back again next week. And so I got my hands pretty much full. Uh, my time is limited. So if you know, I mean, I, I'm just spread thin. That's all there's to it. That's why we have Blog Talk Radio. Um, if you got questions, you want to uh, contact me. Hallelujah, some way, shape, fashion, or form. You want to talk to me. You can do it live on the radio. Now, I was talking to Sister Carol the other night. And what I'd said was, I said, you know what I'm going to do? Maybe twice a month, I'm going to pick a time where I'm going to sit in the dining hall from, uh, let's say, 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. And then we have to take a break for eating for breakfast. And then from 8.30 to 12 or noon. I'm actually going to sit in the dining hall and answer the phone and answer any phone calls, personal calls that you may want to have to me so we can probably try to get back to some of your phone, personal phone calls if you like to talk to me. So we will let you know exactly when that possibly uh, will be materialized. And if you can hear me, uh, let's, you know the routine, go ahead and chime in and give me a check. Let me know how everything's going. Glory to the King. Our enemies, no doubt, they make sure that they let us know that they are our enemies, whether they be close by or far away. Um, but make no mistake about it, Israel. I know it's hard for you to grasp, but there are people who are bitter and vindictive and hatred towards you now. Y'all know ever since we've been on spiritual warfare, I'm going to tell you one thing I've seen just here on this community. And, and we supposed to be the cream of the crop here at Straightway. Just here on this community, I've had to deal with spirits from saints, unbelievable, who have been in this spiritual warfare uh, for 10 years plus. Unbelievable. I expect more I, I, and more self-control out of those people. But that just lets us know that none of us can escape this war. And that is there. And while people are excited about hearing the spiritual warfare message, they're not necessarily ready to confront the issues that are in them. Um, one of the biggest things I've, I've seen going on is a bunch of putting forth for the fingers and blame shifting and, and all this he said, she said and stuff and nobody's dropping any names about what he said or she said. And all those are nothing but those spirits has been manipulating and controlling you all this time. It's just that you refuse to deal with them, so therefore you're the one that's feeling the irritation. You're the one that's feeling the weight of the bitterness. You're the one that's feeling the accusation. And you're the one that your life is in the shambles and turned upside down and you're mentally disturbed. When are we going to get to the point to finally realize and understand if I'm the one feeling it, and if I'm the one hurting, then I'm jacked up by demonic spirits. When are we going to get to that point? Rather than always trying to blame somebody else and playing playground blame shifting like we always have done all of our lives. I told you once, I told you a thousand times why may, many people may want to come and listen to the deliverance message. It's no play thing. And most people are not ready to actually receive that kind of message because it's personal to the person. 
And I watched people in their behaviors do the same thing with spiritual warfare as they do with any other thing. They always put forth the finger and blame somebody else when something is going on. You know, what's right is right. What's right is right. And let me tell you what some of you parents fall short at. When somebody's correcting your little wicked children and making the necessary corrections on your children that you refuse to make. Because everybody's not going to put up with your unruly, um, undisciplined children. Everybody's not going to put up with it. And around here at Straightway, we will correct your children in front of you. If you won't do it, we will do it. And then we will turn around and correct you. And that's just the way it is. And we need that kind of straight talk in the hour that we're living in today. That's what we need in this hour we're living in. We need straight talk like that. So if your children are unruly and undisciplined and not tactful and stuff, we will correct your children. And then we will correct you for not correcting your children. That's just the way it is. Um, because if you're not, you don't have to understand. There used to be a, a thing a long, long time ago that's called home training. But some of your children, when they get out into the public venue or they get outside there as a crowd, they act like they act a damn fool. They act like they do the same way they act out in the public is the same way they act when you get in your house. And if you don't correct those children in the house, they're not going to know how to act in public. And everybody's not going to put up with your children in the public. And then you are the one that's going to get upset. You are the one that's going to get offended. You're the one that's going to be offended and, and you're the one that's going to start making enemies out of everybody else doing what you refuse to do. And when you get my age, uh, you ain't got time for a bunch of foolishness. You really, truly don't. And when you get older, uh, you really ain't got no time for a bunch of foolishness, especially foolishness, uh, because a, a child would only go to the limits that the parents will allow them. But other parents and other people are not going to allow them the same Limits that you allow them in your own home. You better start correcting them little monsters behind closed doors. That's what you better start doing because uh, they're going to end up in a place that's disciplined like this. And, and you're going to get offended. I cannot tell you how many parents I see get offended because they can't stand somebody else making corrections on their children that they refuse to make themselves. It's a mess. Um. You know, there's another epidemic going on around us. Um, and that epidemic is, I want y'all to listen to this. The Bates, Bonnie Bates and Roger Bates did it with SoCal Israelite. SoCal Israelite, brother Scott and them tried to do the right thing. And what happened was the Bates got offended with SoCal Israelite and his family. And then they turned around because things wasn't, Handled, they wouldn't submit to biblical terms. So they wouldn't allow Elder Pena or, or even got to the point to where I could get into it and rectify the issue. They just put up a wall and caused an offense. Told Elder Pena to stay out of it. it that, that's really the Bible way, isn't it? That's, that's really truly wanting to resolve issues, isn't it? And when Brother Roger called me and asked me about it, I had a house full of people visiting who had drove 500 miles to come to here on Sabbath, I didn't have time to deal with issues that I got an elder out in California that could take care of it, but no, you don't want to submit to that though. I don't know what the pride is or whatever, but nobody wants to submit to that. Um, but I got an elder out there in California that could have handled the situation. And then you get mad at me because you are mad at another brother or sister. And then you have a falling out with the preacher. Now that is utterly stupid. And then, same thing, I had that Kathy Smith get mad at Brother Mike Holland and then try to make me the problem for her issue with him when she should not need. She should keep her mouth shut and let her husband do a lot of talking. Let men deal with men. Um, but hey, that's this American society and this American mindset I keep telling you about. Uh, now Kathy Smith is out there making videos calling me a narcissist. Narcissist, isn't that amazing? Now that Jezebel, that's a straight up narcissist. And I'm amazed because I'm always amazed that people always accuse you of what they are guilty of themselves. One thing I learned in life, what you hate about others, you usually find that trait somewhere in you yourself. But it's an epidemic 
of saints having problems with other saints. And then they turn around and because they're part of the ministry, they make me the problem because they got a problem with somebody else. That is stupid. And that's the same thing that they do. Uh, you got this man, R.G. Stair, that's got this pass and he did all this stuff. I didn't do that. He did all that. I didn't do it. But I'm guilty because I'm associated with it. And people say, no, Pastor, that's stupid. But then you saints, you turn around and have a falling out with people who are in the ministry and you blame me for your mishaps and your troubles. Why don't y'all grow up? Sound like a bunch of children on the playground arguing over a football, basketball, or a toy. Grown people now. I hate to see what your children are going to turn out like if you can't get this elementary understanding right here. What a mess we in. What a mess we in. So don't assume, don't assume at all uh, that you got a grasp of everything that's going on. Um, I've sent out letters this week blessing each and every last one of you. You know, I think the, the one crime about this ministry is, and it's not a crime at all. It's a crime according to the order of this world and the fashion of this world. But we correct, we instruct, we reprove, we rebuke. Matter of fact, we don't sugarcoat nothing. We're not hiding behind a curtain. We're here for your perfection. We're here for to make sure that you have life and have liberty. Now that Jezebel's out there and she called Brother Derek and Sister Diane to fall away. But hey, Brother Derek and Sister Diane, they needed to fall away if they're so foolish to listen to a Jezebel like that who has to walk around with a child on a leash. Y'all heard the testimonies about how her son was getting better and now they done took off in this spirit and, and you heard the victories that she was slowly getting over the spirit of autism. Well, you can throw that out the window now. Huh. Hey, um, bro, saying they say video speed now, they freeze them. Refresh and then come back. Let me go ahead and get off into the phone calls. If not, I'm not going to be too long. But, you know, I did have an opportunity this week to meet Brother Bullock and his wife. I am happy, and I want you all to listen to me, to report that we actually have some bona fide knowledge-based Hebrew Israelites in North Carolina, both of them are older couple, and they have tenure. And Brother Bullock and his wife can be an asset and help anybody that needs help, I'm telling you. And it's, it's rare that you come across people who are mature, Discipline, and let me give you an example. Brother Bullock and his wife, a whole lot, I mean, years, and, and a whole have a whole lot more wisdom in the ministry than Brother Mike Holland has. But they didn't go to Brother Mike Holland's place and have a falling out with him. As a matter of fact, they're fellowshipping with him. And they're actually submitting to Brother Mike's leadership there. And you get these foolish Jezebel women wearing wigs and carrying on and then turn around and get mad at you and coloring their head. And they turn around and cause an issue with Brother Mike and his wife lying all over them and cause people to fall away from the faith. And they and, and I hope and the most high reward you according to your iniquity. And you got these older people that's got tenure and understanding of the word and the truth. Sister Carol and I, I'm going to tell you, Brother Bullock, if you and your wife are listening, you and your wife, y'all blessed us here at Straightway because we need people that are part of the ministry that know what they're talking about, that are mature, 
and have a very good understanding. We need that to bring a balance in this ministry. Because we got a bunch of young foolish people and we got a bunch of old foolish people. But we do have some solid mature people as well. I think the one thing, the reason why people like the straightway truth ministry is because people come to the realization they know that we are messed up and we need help. And we all need to repent and turn from our wicked ways. And because we don't skirt around it and and and, and uh, go around it, I think people appreciate that. At least they know where they need to improve at. I've had some demons in me that I just could not self-deliver out. I had to get them cast out by a fellow believer. And that's just the truth. Hallelujah. I've been doing this too long, saints. But, didn't I tell y'all that this was going to happen? That there were going to be people falling away, cutting the food, acting the food, and it is just the truth. Now, Eric Lovely of Wide Awake News will be here the 4th of July. We will be broadcasting more than likely at noon on Friday from probably from 12 to 3. 12 to 3. And then, or somewhere along in there, then we're going to take a break to eat. Then we're going to come back at 5 and Brother Eric is going to be speaking again somewhere along between 5 and 8. He's going to be here for Sabbath. And then we're going to start again Sunday morning. Because I'm, I'm using these terms because we have a lot of people that listen to us that don't know the difference between the first day, the sixth day, the fifth day, and the fourth day. They don't know that difference. But, um... He's going to be speaking for quite a while on that day. We'll take a break and possibly come back again. So we're excited about Brother Lovely uh, actually coming. Hallelujah. And that is the truth. So he'll be here. She's talking about a spiritually abusive ministry simply because a Jezebel can't stand to be corrected. And it's amazing. I don't know what we did to her. But hey. I guarantee you one thing, as much as she runs her mouth, she will not face me in an open dialogue or open civil discussion where it can be videotaped and recorded. I guarantee she won't do that as much as she run her mouth. And I guarantee she won't take all that coloring out of her head either, putting all them chemicals in her head. That woman has solid gray hair, and then the next minute you see her, it's solid black again. Why can't you Israelites be content with the way that the Most High has you going. You're going to get old, saints. You know, I got gray hair in my beard and gray hair in my head. I am not trying to color my head, color my hair to try to stay young. That is vanity. Do y'all hear me? Vanity, vanity, vanity. All is vanity and vexation of spirit. You ain't going to see me say about putting some up. What they call this stuff for me and Carol when you shampoo it in to get the gray out? You ain't going to see Pastor Dow putting no Grecian Formula 44 in his head or in my beard trying to make sure that my hair stays black so I won't show people how old I am. First of all, number one, I don't care how much gray hair I get on my head. I'm getting old. I am getting old. I've been young. And I am getting old. Do you understand? It's part of the process of growing old. So you Israelites stop putting all them chemicals in your head. Coloring yourself. Trying to doctor yourself up from getting old. You're going to get old. And you don't know how stupid you look. Got your hair black as a uniroyal Goodyear tire. And you 60 years old. Everybody know you got gray hair fool. We just got to get raw. We got to get raw. And now I'm, I'm hearing on the internet that some saints, because they're getting wrinkles, they talking about getting Botox shots in their face. Well, stop smoking them damn cigarettes and stop worrying so much. You want to worry about the wrinkles around your lips and those lines going across your forehead. And get some deliverance so you can get some peace. Woo. Help 
help us, Father. We have been too long in exile. Oh, help us, Jesus. We have been too long in exile. We need you to come and get us. Because I sure want thing, ain't going to be nothing but a small remnant left. Carol. Come here, Carol. I'm going to call Sister Carol in here for a second because I want to know. She's a woman. Sit, stand right there you want to. You come around here you want to. But just, just, I need for you to tell me why do women, when they get old, want to color their hair to color up and cover up the gray? Tell us why. Because they feel like the gray hair makes them look older or less attractive either to their spouse or to others. The same with um, makeup and all the Botox and all the wrinkle reduction and... I, I think it's all kind of in the same category. They're just, it's fears from not wanting to get old and vanity. And if you don't get old, you die young. So, blessed be the name of the Most High. Let me tell you something. I love my wife, Sister Carol. She don't look nothing like she did when I first met her. And I don't look nothing like I did when she first met me. And she's old. That means her chest is not as firm as it used to be. And her butt, she didn't have one in the first place. So I definitely didn't marry her because of a, a butt. But she just didn't have one. And it, I think it's a damn shame for you saints to go out here and get titties put into your body. What do they call them? Breast implants? Yes, sir. Breast implants getting shot up in the faces, coloring your head. Tattooing yourself up and piercing your body with the Bible that says it's an abomination. And now you're talking about putting butt pads in your cheeks. It is just a, a sad thing that's going on today. And you expect the most high to come back for your wicked rear end. He said he ain't every false way. And that is false. Sister Carol and I had another year. How long have we been married, Sister Carol? Uh, officially 27 to the world. Oh, officially. To the world. Officially. Yeah. That means the day that we went and got that stupid marriage license. Because we were young and dumb. They say 27 years. Recognized by the state of Tennessee. But we've been really married 30 years. Or was it 31? Really, 31 years. So which one do you go by? You go by when you made a covenant with each other? Or do you go by when the state granted you your privilege through licenses? Which one do you go by? want no old 46, 47 year old man. <laughs> That's why when you get up, the Bible says you rejoice in the wife of thy youth. And you let her breast satisfy you. I think it's secular humanism is killing us. I really truly do. I think it's really killing us. I think that there's something wrong. There's something seriously wrong. Oh, help us, Father. Ah, let me go ahead and take some phone calls. Let me take some phone calls before I say something that I might regret. My, my, my. Where we at in the phone line? Who we got up first? Junior, call on number 347. This is Pastor Dow, you know, straight with you, three of your broken. How can I help you, Junior? Well, it's a change. Brock Shalom, Pastor, and my family listening. I love that talk, man. I love that talk. You need that talk. Love that talk, man. I love it. We got problems, Junior. I don't know what's wrong with these, these, these women. They want to paint their faces, paint their toes, paint their nails. 
color their head, put fake body parts in their chest and butts and can on. Man, we what man that's an abomination. Ain't no Israelites supposed to be doing no stuff like that, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Keep it natural, keep it real. That's people firm not destroy people as a hair short everything. Bob makes the curse of everything. Yeah, bobbing their hair off, man. And so much for the scriptures gets when it says, Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 That is crazy. I ain't put nothing in my body. I'm natural. No injection, none, no steroids, none of that. Now, don't get me wrong, Saints. Yeah. If you just coming into this faith, you can come the straight way. We got people come the straight way with makeup, jewelry, pants, uh, the whole nine yards. We understand that there's a transition that's being made, but don't take too long. We understand that. You ain't going to get me jumping all over people and judging people because um, they don't fit the bill totally. It took us a while to get transformed. So we give people time, plenty of time to transform. But I tell you what, it should take no two, three years, brother. You're dealing with rebellion after that. Hey, Junior, you breaking up, man. Don't help her. Excuse me? You breaking up. Like, like, I'm crazy again. Um, like, he don't be all like, take it all, take it all, go ahead, take it all. But, you know, it takes time, it takes time. It's coming, and it just takes time. Got come, I can't jump out. There you go. That That's wisdom, brother Junior. That's wisdom. Yeah, exactly. You keep like that, man. Take it off, take it off, take it off. You got all hell for that. Nah, man, you don't sit up and take the stuff off for folk, man. You know, uh. <laughs> that's part of, that is retarded, man. Acting, acting old, you old, but you acting young. That's, that's foolish, man. That's retarded. Don't say make a big retard, that's spiritual retardation. Something's going on, spiritual retardation. Hey, Junior. Spiritual needed. Yes, sir. Hey, I, I'm getting old, brother. Yeah. I got gray hair in my head, brother Junior. Yeah, I see. And you come down here, and brother, you ever see Pastor Dow one time, and you don't see no gray hair in my head, you can be sure, brother, that I done went out and bought me some paint and painted my hair. Yeah. And you walk up to me and say, Pastor, the Most High said he ate every false way. That's what you say, brother. <laughs> exactly, I will. Could the Bible says so, but... People say, oh, you cannot talk about your pastor like that. He's your master. He's your master. But people are screwed, man. They're screwed up. People are correct them. I ain't yeah. even thinking about it. I'm correcting you. Yeah, man. You just love me because you love me enough to tell me the truth. Yeah, exactly. I'm not going to beat you. No, you beat your L. You're L too. I got to be no, saved too. Correct you. Yeah, exactly. They take it personally. You can't be big L, so you don't correct it. You take that personally as an excuse. No, see, that's the problem we got today is that uh, people have, have gotten away from correction, gotten away from instruction, and gotten away from rebuke. Now, that's the problem we got today. Yeah, you want me running the back? Like, don't, don't worry about that. Nobody. I'm running your back. Nobody is below, nobody is above truth. Running your back at everything? No, no, that's not the way. I gotta repeat. I gotta yell. I gotta kick you. Yell or not. I gotta correct you. So you get better, you get stronger too. You get stronger. You can't run back. You're not be a man or woman. You'll be a, a little child. That's why they act like children because they don't get rebuked like that. They get run. They run in the back. Run in the back. Be a, want to be a follower. A follower of this world. Not follow follow person who's not follow Christ. Hallelujah. So follow. I'm not a follower. I'm not a follower. I follow people who follow Christ. I don't follow. I don't follow no people in the street, in the world. I don't talk for that. Way too short for that. That's how you do it. That's how you do it, my brother. Exactly. I like that. Um, the 
Bombshell, you did too. Hey, I'm gonna drop a I'm gonna drop a bombshell tomorrow before I get off into spiritual warfare about Christianity, brother. I hope you're ready. Yeah, I'll be ready for it. Any message you do is good. Any message is pretty good. Any message is good. Yes, it was down too. Down. I think I'm going to go down to the $15. That's what I think. And then I'll raise it back up next year or whatever. But they claim that this is the last time by on to by sewer. The last time. Yeah, I, I agree with it because and I'm telling you, brother, I, I knew that they was going to smash it. Do you remember when I said, I hope they smash it down to $5? Yeah, I would say all this, all this down to two cents. <laughs> you got that right. Yeah, so I could buy it. I'm gonna be for one day, and then go back up. Yeah, we ain't gonna see these levels again, back. brother. Uh huh. Yeah, I, I got your um your um invitation letter about dots. I got it today. I got it. Oh, you got my letter. Thank you. Yes, sir. I got it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, what that is. is they still got to reply back, Julian. That's just informing you of what's going on. Okay. Okay, like, like, like I tell you I go or not. Okay. Yeah, giving you time frames and, and and all that stuff. We still got plenty of time to get everything going, though. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of time. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Pastor. I'll let you go, Pastor. Of course, we got to rest tomorrow. Please teach you tomorrow. Be a good teacher tomorrow. Love you, Pastor. Nice talking to you. Shalom. Shabbat shalom. Have a good night. All right. Shalom, Joe. You're good to hear from me. Let's go to Michigan. 248 to Brother Cole. Brother Cole from Michigan, 248. This is Pastor Dowie on Straight Truth. How you doing? Hey, I'm blessed, Pastor. How you doing? Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, my brother. I'm doing well. It's good to hear from you. Yeah, it's nice hearing from you. I mean, you know, it's nice talking to you again as well. Um, I was uh, still waiting on your phone call. You said you was going to give me a call this uh, this weekend, but... I did? Um, I heard that, you know... Yeah, yeah, you did. Uh, me and uh, Brother Vern, we was on together, and uh, you asked me, was this my phone number? And I told you, yeah, so you said you was going to call me. Oh, brother. And you said, you know, I knew, that's okay, man, you know... It's all good. Um, I know you're busy and everything, you know, but um, like you said, you know, you just got to have patience. So, you know, I thank you for that word, too. You know, bro, Cole, I, I guarantee you that's not, I guarantee you I work harder and I am more busy than any 20 pastors you can put together in this nation. <laughs> you know what? I believe that, too, because, uh, Brother Ron, you always telling me how busy you are, you know, even when you said, you know, you be building and, you know, you just got a whole lot going on, man. So, you know, I respect you for that, you know. And uh, as long as I've been going to these Christian churches around here, you know, I done seen some lazy pastors, but they be having a congregation doing all the work for them. No, I'm busy, brother. I have to take care of a lot of things. I really am trying to divest myself of a lot of stuff. But, you know, I'm trying to make sure that the people that I do divest stuff to have some competence about them, if you understand what I mean. Oh, yes, sir. I do. Um, also, uh, you know, I just want to encourage you, you know, to keep on doing what you're doing. And, you know, me and Brother Vern, we always getting together on, uh, you know, the Shabbat and, you know, we sit here at my home and you know we uh invite you into my home through uh through the uh internet and uh i really appreciate you know the teachings that you were teaching you know because it's the truth and there's a lot of people still right now they don't know who they are you know what i'm saying as far as being israelite and they're sitting around calling themselves gentiles i've, I've tried to uh give them some acknowledgement you know about who they are but they still refuse to acknowledge it and even the bible tells us that you know they were going to uh, disinherit their their heritage huh bro i'm gonna help you out here okay yes sir the bible says in first corinthians fourteen thirty eight. but if any man be ignorant let him be ignorant. 
Brother, people, yes, <laughs> people have a right to be ignorant. They have a right. I mean, really, and, and, and you won't see the Messiah, none of the apostles, anybody fighting against these folks who want to be ignorant. Ignorance will destroy you, but they have a right to be ignorant. That's why he said, if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant, brother. Shake the dust off your feet. Walk on away, brother. And now, and remember this. Bro, just because people look, may look like an Israelite, whatever that is, or they may try to call themselves Israel, not everyone that say that they are Israel is Israel. Yes, sir. And I read that also as well, too. So, you know, I know you're right. Um, even though I've, uh, you know, they, they come against me and they try to tell me other things, but you know, the thing about it is that, you know, when you read in the Old Testament, you know, the Old Testament states that, you know, the Most High told us to keep all his laws and statutes and judgments throughout your generations. And these preachers here today that, that, that so-called preach on a Sunday, which is worshiping Satan, you know, they say that the Old Testament is closed, but we know that you know, there's no more Levitical priesthood, and Yahshua came, you know, to be a sacrifice for us. So, you know, therefore, uh, we still have to keep the most high statutes and laws and judgment. And this is what not these preachers is understanding. And also, I also thank Brother Vern as well, you know, for being uh, a teacher to me as well, you know, and as far as following you. You know, so this has been a very enlightenment to me. And uh, I just want to say that, you know, as well. Hallelujah. Well, it's good to hear from you, brother. Yes, sir. It's always good talking to you. Um, but another thing, though, Pastor, you know, I'm going through a, a trans in my life uh, with my wife. And uh, we have been separated uh, for about a year now because of my daughter uh, being in my household. You know, she was uh, disrespectful and being, uh, uh, how you say, rebellious of the things that I tell her not to do. And I've had a situation where the government put me out of my house. And um, I'm going through some difficulties now. So I need uh, for you to help me through this this thing that I'm going through. Um, I need deliverance, and I really don't want to discuss it, you know, over the air, because there's some things that, you know, that you ought to keep to yourself between you and the Most High. And, but I, as I've been following you for a long time now, but like I told you before, the Most High showed me a dream, and he insisted that, you know, I continue to follow you because your teaching is right. So, uh, Brother Vern and uh, a couple of more brothers, uh, they talked about coming down the straightway, and I was just, you know, wondering when they come, you know, would I be able to, you know, come with them because I really need deliverance, and I need to talk to you because where I'm at, there is no real pastor. So, you know, I pray every day, you know, and ask the Most High, you know, to forgive me for the sins that I've done. Uh, but I, I really do need deliverance from this. My life is a, is a mess. Hmm. I understand, but you're more than welcome to come down, brother. Well, I still appreciate that, Pastor, because... You know, I, I I remember how you uh you you talked about there was a woman that had passed away in your congregation, and how you spoke about another man talking about bringing her back, but you told him to go ahead on and do what he was supposed to do, but he didn't want to get up and go do it, and uh, you said you took your time and you walked back there, and you know you you brought back the dead, and Yahshua Messiah, Jesus Christ, Holy Mighty, and Precious Name. So, you know, and that's why I need a real, a real preacher, a man of Yah. And I, I, I do believe, 
and, and I know once I get there to you, I know that I will be delivered. I can't keep messing around with these fake pastors up here. I really can't. And my family, my family, they don't talk to me no more because of what I'm doing. They call you a coach and everything else. I've heard you say people call you a coach. My mom, she just blasts for me, you know, for me, me and he told me that what I'm doing. Is well, that's amazing, isn't it? It's amazing. Uh, Christianity is the largest cult in the in the world, and they're the biggest one, and they don't even know what a cult is. Yeah, and I know, I know they don't. I've tried to give my mom scriptures and everything else, but she just refused to acknowledge the things that I say. So you know, I don't even I don't even speak to her no more. I mean, that's my mom, and I love her, but you know. I just can't deal with this stuff no more, Pastor. I mean, you know, Brother Vern, he's a very strong brother, and, you know, he tried to keep me focused and everything else, but I know once I get down there with you, I know that everything is going to be all right. All right, my brother. Hey, um, let me go ahead and get the rest of these phone calls. We'll chat with you later. Okay, then, Pastor, I really appreciate you uh, giving me the authority, and uh, may y'all continue to bless you and give you the knowledge and continue to teach us Israelites. Shalom. Shalom. <laughs> all right, all right. Now, what happened to Brother Bullock? I know I just seen Brother Bullock. Huh. I was just getting ready to click on Brother Bullock, and he's gone. At least out of the room. Uh, maybe he'll come back in. Let's go to Texas, brother Desmond. Nine four zero nine four zero is Pastor Dow. How you doing, brother? Shabbat shalom, Pastor. Shabbat shalom. What's up? How you doing, Pastor? Uh, what was the uh, what was the young gentleman that was just from before said he needed to talk to you? What was his name? Who? Oh, we, uh, me and the brother from Michigan. That's brother Cole. Cole, okay. We want to get his name because me and sister going to pray for him. So we'll make sure that he had his name. Uh, hey, young pastor. Uh, we just want to say call to Shabbat Shalom. Uh, we want to add, I know you're busy, so. And, and oh, it's just the same pastor. I think that's a beautiful thing that you're going to do for the, uh, in the dining hall. You know, a lot of saints out there appreciate that. And, uh, you know, if you wasn't working so much, you know what I'm saying? And if most people would step up and you wouldn't be working so much, you'd be able to do a lot of this stuff for us. And then spend a lot more time in your words to you know, get us right. So, but, uh, kudos to the, you on that pastor. And, uh, and she's right here. She said, hello. Pastor. Uh, I had a question to ask you. Um, why did uh, Why did Jesus say he's the son of man? Can you, can you, can you answer? Pastor. Why did Jesus say he was the son of man? Yes, sir. The reason why he said he's the son of man because him being Yah in the flesh, are you following me? He put on, let me let me use terms like this, it's easy for us to understand. He had an earth suit on called flesh. And that's why he's the son of man. Hallelujah. <laughs> Is that making sense? That, that, that made perfect sense to the pastor. That's about as simple as I can break it down. Hey, and I, I enjoy the simple because I'm a simple man. <laughs> All right, my brother. Uh, and I just want to say on that, that lady issue, I know you ain't too much worried about the following into other people's gossip and, you know, people wearing a wig, like Sister Stan said, like, why do you want to wear a wig, a wig, you wearing a head covering anyway? It don't make sense, do it? It really don't make, it don't make no sense, Pastor, but you know what I'm saying? It comes to show right there that when she came into the faith, she really wasn't for the father anyway. You know what I'm saying? She was. She wanted to do something else, or whoever wanted, whoever it was, they wanted. Their mind was in something else. They wanted somebody to praise them or something like that for them doing something. They they, they were doing different. That's all they was right or doing different from what everybody else was doing. That's all they was. They really wasn't about their father's business. So, so that's good that we got some. You know, saying people that getting out of it because you know separate them uh, the week from the stairs. You need that. 
Yeah, I can't remember from one day to the next. Nowadays, brother, things getting so bad. <laughs> I mean, it ain't bad. It's All really right. good. You know what I mean? It's just that it, I gotta, I gotta figure out a way um, to spend time to lighten the load even the more. So, if you understand what I mean. Another time, you don't have to talk about it on blog talk right now. Oh, yeah, I'm good, Pastor. Yes, sir. But, uh, bye, shalom to the Saints out of the Warriors. I love you. Uh, hope to hear you, Sabbath. Now, I can't wait to hear the Sabbath uh, message about uh, Christianity and then spiritual warfare, of course. All right, shalom. Shalom, brother. Pastor, love you. Love you, too. Well, we busy, folks. Let's go to North Carolina 512 to Brother Bullock. Brother Bullock. How you doing, Brother Bullock? Hey, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Good hearing your voice, Elder. Oh, yeah. Good hearing you, too. What you got? Well, I just want to say, Pastor, thank you for the blessing you gave me on Wednesday night. And It's it's real, ain't it? Ain't it? Ain't it, brother Bullock? Oh yeah, it's real. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Hey, I tell you what, we we live the way that we say we live, don't we, brother? Oh yeah, oh yeah, no doubt about that. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, uh, I'm gonna I'm, I'm tell you. Anybody that 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 that, uh, that uh, has anything negative to say, they just don't know. They 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 have not been there. Hallelujah. Elders, good to hear from you. Yeah, yeah, it's good to hear from you too. And uh, 
And uh, uh, we got those uh, shirts. My wife, were, uh, uh, we're working on those shirts. Well, thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. So, all right, then. Well, uh, I'll, I'll let you go, but, but, uh, uh, so it's, it's, it's good to hear your voice, and then I finally, I finally got to lay eyes on you, and, uh, hey, man, that made my, that, that did my heart good. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, it's good to hear from you, Brother Bullock. Uh, yes, sir. And, uh, 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 okay, well. Give a hug to the wife, uh, me. <laughs> okay, I sure will. I sure will. All right. All right. Shabbat shalom, brother. Shalom, my brother. Brother Bullock is a good brother, I'm telling you. Just a flat-out good brother. Where are we at right here? Ah, let's go to Texas. The brother Desmond there in Texas, nine four zero. How you doing there, brother? Uh, hey, didn't we pull you up just a minute ago, brother? Okay. Well, we're gonna holler at you later. Okay. Shalom. Got to make sure we got brother Desmond out of the way there. I know we did. Let's go to, 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 to Brother Jesus, 910. How you doing there, Brother Jesus? How you doing? Shabbat Shalom, Pastor Dow. Shabbat Shalom. Well, thanks for listening. Uh, how you doing, Pastor Dow? Hey, got a saying for you. Pain is weakness leaving the body. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, it is. It is. And also, pain, as far as I'm concerned, pain is also demonic spirits leaving your body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. How you doing, Pastor Dow? I'm doing all right, brother. Good hearing your voice. It was nice hearing your voice. Uh, nice hearing the voice of the saints, Pastor Dow. And uh, I'm glad that you got an opportunity to uh, see uh, Brother Bullock. Yeah. Right. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful family him and his wife is, brother. I can't wait to see him again. And... Uh, you know, it's a it's a wonderful thing, Pastor Dow, uh, what Brother Mike Holland is doing down there in North Carolina, um, doing his uh, his own thing, and uh, it's just a good thing. I really it really encourages my my soul what he's doing, and uh, the Most High is definitely working in his life, giving him an increase. Um, it's a good thing, and uh, it's, it's sad uh, what had to happen with Brother Derek and uh, yeah, it is. Um, Sister Diana. It's really a sad thing, and. It is what it is. Hey, everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And if it can be shaken, the reason why it's been shaken is so that it can be removed and taken out of the way. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I, I do have a question for you tonight. Um, sure. What do you got? Uh, I, w I, was, I was reading the book of Acts um, last night. And I was in chapter 7 where basically... Uh, Stephen, the disciple Stephen, is, you know, talking to uh, the, the Sadducees, I believe, you know, the, the elders of Israel, whatever. Um, and he mentioned that the burning bush was a uh, an angel of the Most High. Is, is that, is, is, so it was an angel speaking to, to Moses, is that right? Where you read that at? Uh, in, the, in the book of Acts, uh, chapter 7. He said an angel of God appeared to Stephen in, in the bush. Uh, let, me, let me just pull it up here for you real quick. Uh, uh, give me one second. I spell. You talking about Stephen? Acts uh, chapter 7. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, where, where are you talking about with the bro the bush? Alright, uh, give me one, I'm sorry, Pastor, uh, let me find it real quick. Um, Alright, it's, it's, 
Acts chapter 7, uh, verse 30. Uh, and it says, When forty years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. Right, correct. And I was just wondering if it was an angel speaking to Moses uh, in Mount Sinai. No, what it is, brother, is, is that voice. It sure was. You know, because remember, Yah is a spirit. And at that time, when, when people were seeing the Messiah, see, Moses actually saw Jesus Christ, the Messiah, who was actually, you know, Yahweh himself. But in that time, he's in the spirit form. So when he's saying the angel of the Lord, you know, you're dealing with, with translation right there. But when you're dealing with that, brother, you, you uh, he was hearing a voice. But remember, he saw no similitude. Until he saw, until Moses actually saw the Most High when he put him in the cleft of the rock and then he passed by, put his hand between the rock and he saw his backside. So you're looking at a lot of times, brother, when you get over into the renewed covenant, you have to kind of almost be careful of the translation to make sure you stick with what the Torah and the Tanakh says first. Okay. Yes, sir. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. So he saw the fire yes, and, and he heard a voice. Uh, well, I was just wondering about that, Pastor Dow, and uh, I, I appreciate you answering my question. Yes, sir, because the Torah, you know, tells us that it was a burning bush, and then they heard a voice. Moshe, Moshe heard a voice out of the bush. He didn't say anything. He knew it was that, that it was the Most High himself, but what the Renewed Covenant translates as the angel of the Lord. But we know that that was Yahweh himself that actually came down and talked to Moses. That's why I try my best to... To make sure that people understand the scripture. Because remember the scripture cannot be broken. And all scripture is given by inspiration of Yah. And we're looking at the, the renewed covenant brother. Remember these are the gospels. These are letters and epistles. Letters of sanctification. But they are not scripture. Yes sir. Yes sir. Amen. And thank you for that Pastor Dow for sure. Well, and uh, um, then I have another question. Let me think. Uh, I just had it in my mind. I'll put it in here. Um. Yes, uh, in Exodus, in Exodus, um, why did the Most High, or why did the Most High harden Pharaoh's heart? And, and I was thinking about it, and uh, I felt like maybe his heart was already hardened. Uh, but did the Most High harden Pharaoh's heart, or was it already hardened? Well, yeah, I mean, you have to understand that Pharaoh believed himself to be Ra or God on the earth. Again, you're looking at English translation. Now, sure that, you know, he knew that his heart was going to get hardened, meaning he was going to get bitter. He was going to get angry. He was going to get upset. You know, you're, you're dealing with language. you, you got a, a language barrier here. We, we have a Bible that is translated to us after uh, a Western perspective. That's the reason why it's important for us to define words as close as we can get it from the Eastern perspective, from a Hebraic perspective, people who have native of that land rather than people who uh, practice displacement, um, conquering and consolidating lands under the auspices of the Greeks and the Romans, because you're going to deal with these type of issues when you're dealing with translation. But no doubt when you got two so-called perceived gods and only one of them is God arguing with each other. The other one, heart will get hardened and stuff because he's actually, you know, Pharaoh was raised up to accomplish Yah's will in order to get Israel deliverance. But Pharaoh wasn't about to set up and receive somebody else's God when he thought himself to be God on earth. Yes, sir. So you're dealing with pride. His pride is what hardened him. Yes, sir. And uh, that's what I was thinking because um, there's a lot of things in the Bible that, you know, that, that you know, you really have to pay attention to, and sometimes I have to read it myself so many times, and then I finally get it. Um, but I appreciate you answering my question, and that's what I really, that's what I really thought uh, as well, Pastor. Now, and uh, I, I appreciate you uh, answering my question. Shabbat uh, shalom to you, Pastor. Now, all the saints listening, uh, Pastor. Now, I'm, I'm like, I'll be honest. Uh, you, you're always encouraging me. The Lamont is always encouraging me, and I just really. Uh, I'm striving. I'm striving. Hallelujah. Keep in the faith, my brother. Keep in the faith. I will. I will. And uh, Shabbat Shalom to you, all the saints listening. Uh, love you.
Shalom. Love you too, my brother. Shabbat Shalom. Glory to the King. All right, where are we at? We're going to go to um, Brother Hernandez in Oregon. Brother Hernandez in Oregon, calling number 404. How you doing, Brother Hernandez? Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. Shabbat Shalom. Just calling in to give you thanks for your messages again. Just thanks for the most high. Um, you know, like I said before, all this stuff is foreign to me, but it's in the book, so I can't really deny it. Hallelujah. And, well, I wanted to ask you something. Um, if it was okay for me to maybe go to Straightway, this, maybe this before this year ends, it was okay with you. No, oh, you want to come and visit? You know me better. Yeah. You can come and visit. You just need to let us know when you're coming and what date you're leaving. Okay. Okay. Well, that's what, pretty much what I had to ask you. Um, been in my heart, but I don't know. It's probably this American attitude we have that, you know, I'll do it this week and the week comes by and I'll do it next week. Well, if you're coming to visit, sure. brother, just let us know when you're coming to visit uh, so we can prepare for you, you know what I mean? Because we know logistically we have to prepare whenever we're receiving guests, if you know what I mean. Yes, sir. All right, my brother. Well, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Pastor. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. All right, let's go to Sister Genia in Tennessee, 931931. This is Pastor Dow, you know, straight with you, the radio broadcast. How can I help you, sister? Ah, uh, Shalom. Got to listen to me on the phone. What's up? Oh, I thought you were talking about somebody else, Pastor. My name is Janae. Janae. Okay, how you doing, Janae? Yes. Fine, how are you? Well, Pastor, I mean, I'm getting old. I can't talk. I can't halfway talk. I can barely even speak English. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. I just wanted to let you know that my daughter loves your little introduction for the uh, Shabbat service, every time she hears you speaking on there, she comes running, and she's just eighteen months. Really? Yeah, I have, I have that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to uh, to let you know that we were uh, we're we're coming down there tomorrow. Oh, you are. This morning. Okay. Yes, we're at the uh, West Point. Well, come on. And. Uh, yeah, and uh, originally, I tell you, we were originally going to Nashville to visit some family, and boy, when they found out we were listening to Pastor Dow, oh, we got the business, and we got the business real bad, and I, my husband, he just said, you know something, since they got something so bad against Pastor Dow, how about we just go on down there and visit with Pastor Dow and we ain't even going to stop at Nashville. We just going to keep on going. I said, yeah, well, you know, that's our real family down there at Straightway anyway. You know, that's amazing. <laughs> These people have never even met me, but yet I got people so angry at me. But I, I know the reason why they're angry at me. They're angry at me be, is because light, meaning truth, is shining upon the darkness in their life and they hate the reflection that they'll see so therefore they got to try to make me evil because they refuse to deal with the evil that is within them mm -hmm. and that uh that spiritual warfare man that that has been moving all around in our uh in our house my husband's been dealing with it at work and uh before we got the uh phone call from my my mother she was the one that went kind of spastic on us and uh, everything. But right before then, I was listening to one of your uh, sermons about accusing spirits. Uh-oh. Uh, yes. And I was like, Pastor was just, I was, I was just listening to it. And I was telling my husband, and he said, well, I guess we need to test them spirits like he was telling us to. So... Pastor, you are helping us out so much, and I, I can't wait to meet you. I really can't. I'm so excited. 
<laughs> well, we'll be here. We'll be here. Be the father's yeah. will for sure. And um, you know, yeah. Uh, I mean, if you're gonna, you know, uh, make a day of it, and you come to visit, and the next time you come visit, you let us know you're coming. You could probably come up a little early, and we'll prepare a place for you and your husband and child to stay. That way, you can spend the night, stay overnight, and then that way you don't have to worry about being rushed. Yeah. Yeah, we, we probably should have, uh, you know, prepared a, a lot sooner, but it was it was really spare at the moment because, like I said, we were going to go to Nashville and visit some family there, but they just ticked us off so bad, and we said, well, we'll go down the straightway. Now, what is your last name? Dowell. Oh, okay. You mean to tell me, man, them people are, are still hating on me that bad? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, I didn't know that they hated me so bad because I haven't said nothing to any of them in probably 20 something years. Or maybe 10, at least 10 years for sure. Right. And I told my mother, I said, You don't even know him. <laughs> you, you're just going off of what somebody else done told you. You know, it's amazing because I, I left home uh, when I was 18 years old. And I would come back from time to time and see somebody here, there, here, that. Other than that, I really truly don't even know them that family in Nashville because I've always been gone. I'm and my, and my mom and dad they you know um, when I got older they lived you know out like way out they lived out like in a Madison you know I grew up in Madison and I really didn't have close ties and relationships with that family so I don't know what the problem is. Now um, I do remember my mom when I first told her that I was listening to you she she knew who you was and. Uh, she told me that when I was first born that you and Sister Carol came to the hospital and saw me as a baby. But I don't know how, you know, I don't know how definite that is. That's been, what, 24 years ago. Well, I, I definitely can't remember that long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I surely don't remember it. Hallelujah. No, not as a baby, you don't. <laughs> Well, I do know one thing, sister. Uh, you'll be able to form your own opinion tomorrow, you and your husband, when you meet us and see us and all the saints here straightway. Oh, I know. I can't wait. I cannot wait. I'm so excited. Hallelujah. All right, sister. Shabbat shalom, pastor. Hey, don't forget to give us a call because uh, we have to meet y'all up there at Walmart so we can get somebody to lead y'all in because, you know, you can get lost up here in this country. Oh, yeah, that's what they told us when we called. <laughs> All right. It's, uh, it's, okay. Shalom. Shalom, Pastor. Glory to the King. All right, let's go to Brother Greg in Texas, 713-713. How you doing, Brother Greg? Hey, 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 Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. How's it going? Oh, brother, we doing all right. Got your phone message, but you know how it is, man. You already know the deal. Well, I know the deal, Pastor. I was just, I was just making that sense. You know how it goes. I ain't talked to him in a while. Got a lot going on in Houston and all that. But right now, uh, me and Brother Mitch, we on that, we on that road to, um, Dallas, we're about maybe 59 miles away, and then we're going to fellowship with the Gorman, of course, and Brother Desmond and so on, and, uh, and possibly a couple new sisters as well, and then uh, we're going to be shooting up to, uh, to uh, uh, Oklahoma, just uh, checking out some lands and stuff, you know, the, 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 the plan, we're going to walk about maybe, I think, three of them, we're going to walk through them lands and check them out. All right. They're trying to do the work, that's for, that's for sure. Man, who going to hold down the fort in Houston when you got both y'all strong men gone? Oh, well, they, they can handle themselves. They grow. All right. That's a good answer. That's a very good answer. <laughs> well, I'll put it to you like this. Uh, being Israelites, we should be able to control ourselves. Hallelujah. You got that right. I think I'll think be all right. I think I'll think be fine, Pastor. But uh, I, know, I, know you've been, I know you've been getting tired up and everything. I want to let you know the progress. You know, we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be walking the land for a day, and um, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully, something will pan out here pretty soon. So, 
We just look. We just looking for good things to happen fast. So we just been, been doing a whole lot lately. We've been busy all week, as we are all, always, all the time, every week. You know, we're always busy. I was I was feeling kind of bad uh, the first three days of this week. I was feeling sick and everything. But I ever I just people was trying to give me medication to work and stuff like that. And I told them I don't do that kind of witch crap. And I just kept on binding and loosening. You know, and uh, and and yesterday. I woke up and shoot everything. Everything was gone. So, you know, I praise God for that. Well, glory to the King. Yes, indeed. Sir. Yes, indeed. Like I said, I didn't want to hold this up. I just wanted to make sure I uh, don't give you a call and talk to you for a little bit and a little while since I called. But uh, I just want to let you know, say some shalom and love you, Pastor. Love everybody over there at uh, Straightway, and and uh, we'll be fellowship with the Gormans here soon. So, uh, I'm just thankful for. Uh, being able to uh, just fellowship with all the saints and get signed to everyone, uh, and, and I'll be I'll be in uh, New Orleans next week with, with the Elder Tony. Uh, all right, him out over there, seeing how he's doing. All right, hey, so we'll, uh, we'll keep you up, we'll keep you updated. Well, thank you very much, brother. And don't forget to the, the, the give brother Josh and sister Candace and the boys a hug from Pastor too. Tell them Pastor love them. Oh yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely will do that. Uh, just Shabbat Shalom, Pastor, and tell everybody it's straight well. I love them, and uh, Shabbat Shalom, everybody is uh, scattered abroad. All right, my brother. Shabbat Shalom. Safe journey. Y'all speed. Bless you, Father. Just ask as well. Hallelujah. All right, where we at? Let's go to Pennsylvania, 267, to Brother Luke. Brother Luke in Pennsylvania. How you doing, Brother Luke? Doing very well. How you doing, Pastor? We all right, my brother. All right, man. You um, you gonna have a good time with them Israelites, brother? Oh, I got to go uh, two weeks ago with them, and uh, it was awesome. All right. Good time. And, you know, can't really talk to you know anybody around here about kind of things because they say that you know you're extreme, or you know, meaning me, you know, that I'm extreme or radical. Yeah, we know. Uh, you know, they just don't want to hear it. Hey, don't worry about it. Save yourself. Well, I can't. <laughs> Only y'all can do that. But I know what you mean. All right, bro. Look, be at peace hey. and get ready for tomorrow, all right? Yes, sir. Shalom, my brother. Shalom. Hallelujah. Let's go to uh, Georgia. Four zero four. This is Pastor Down in the Straight with You. How can I help you? Exactly. Georgia. Hello. I guess Georgia's having a conversation down there and push one and want to get in the queue, but didn't know that we're listening to his conversation. So we'll just go ahead and cut that off right there because we don't need to be all in this business and conversation like that. That is for sure. All right. Let's go to... Um, um, did I do that one yet? Let me see. I'm trying to make sure I answer these in the order that they come in. Sometimes it's not possible. Go to Brother Freeman. 540 Brother Freeman in Virginia. How you doing, Brother Freeman? Uh, I'm doing good, uh, Pastor. How you doing? We blessed of the Most High Yah. Doing well. Doing well. Good hearing your voice, my brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm sitting here watching Pastor uh, with uh, 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 a friend of mine, and he's, he's sitting here watching with me. And uh, uh, Pastor, uh, I just called in the station by Shalom and Saints. I'm listening. I love you all. Uh, Pastor, uh, I really wanted to come down with Brother Vernon and uh, Brother Jermaine. He told me he was coming, and I kind of felt like, wow, man, I, I, I wish I was with y'all. Well, I, I, I hope I can get come down there with y'all, but uh, probably won't make it this time, Pastor, but I'm coming down soon, Pastor. Well, you'll get there in time, brother, in time. Yes, sir. I, well, actually, I just want to just let you all know that I love you and Shabbat Shalom, and I will be down there soon. I'm encouraged. I really don't have much. I just wanted to let you know I'm out here, Pastor. All right. Good hearing from you, my brother. Shalom. Yes, sir. Shalom. 
Uh, you know, I'm still saying shalom because I wanted to make sure. Hold on a second. Okay, good. I can officially say Shabbat Shalom. I had to check to make sure Shabbat Shalom each and every last one of you. We're going to go to um, Oregon 541, Sister Marjorie. How you doing, Sister Marjorie? This is Pastor Dow. Hi, Pastor Dow. Hey, Sister Marjorie. You know, the water is kind of warmed up a little bit since you was last baptized. Go ahead. They're really amazing. I'm listening. First of all, I my car. I have a Rav Four. I bought it a few years ago, and I bought it from a gentleman that lived in Washington. Do I didn't know him? He didn't know me. And I just pretty much uh, looked up online, and it looked like the car had not been in any uh, total uh, situations. And I just bought the car by faith. I had prayed. And he told me, well, we're coming down to our sister, uh, our daughter's wedding this weekend to California. You can drive it down to Grants Pass. They're coming from Washington State. And because I was worried, how do I, you know, go pick up the car? I'm not used to the big cities anymore, you know, because here in Grants Pass, we only have the I-5, you know, south. Yes, ma'am. North. That's it. You don't have any of the other, you know, getting onto the other freeways like you do in the big cities. Right. So, he met me. I met him. My dad was with me over at near Walmart. Not Walmart here. And I saw the car and I drove it around a circle maybe two times. I felt that it felt right. I gave him the uh, cashier's check for, I think, it was $6,500 that my girlfriend from uh, junior high lent me. And I paid her back. $500 a month by my dad's, uh, you know, help. So then, to make a long story short, this is where it gets really amazing. My dad, uh, he has hip problems, so he, uh, the car got, he destroyed the stick shift system one time, and that was $1,600. So I had to pay that. And then it got destroyed again because he kept insisting that, you know, it was a car, it wasn't him, and, you know, God bless his soul. He just, you know, wanted to drive and he wanted to take my son to school. Okay, now I'm going to make this story shorter. Uh, now the car, my dad ruined it sort of a little tiny bit. It wasn't as bad, you know, like the first two times, but it got to the point where I drove it home about four days ago, and I knew I could no longer drive it because it would be another $1,600. So I had no idea how I would uh, manage this bill. So I finally called my mechanic who has a good reputation in this town 
because uh, different, about three different people said, oh, yeah, Greg, he's a good person. Yeah, Greg's a good person. Okay, short story right now. I took my car to him this morning uh, to for him to look at, and I was going to give him the pink slip and sign it over to him so he would basically own the car until I uh, paid him the total amount of the bill, which would have been about $1,600. So I got a ride there. And then he checked it out. He called me about 4.30, and he said, your car is sick. I said, really? He said, yeah, it was a little part near the first gear. Had I continued driving it, it would have become a $1,600 bill. So I said, how much do I owe you? He said, nothing. Oh, that's good. That's a blessing. So for anyone that has any doubt about you, yeah, he comes through for us. Yeah. All you have to have is faith in him. That's all right, Sister Marjorie. Sound like you got a real good I blessing. Didn't, I didn't have a right there, so I just put my tennis shoes on. Because he's only about five blocks from me, and I walked there. I live in a small town, Grass Pass, Oregon. And I got there, and he gave me the key, and he gave me a bill that said it sounds to zero. Oh, that's beautiful. So I promised him from now on that he would probably get, you know, like sandwiches for lunch, because he lives at the, you know, his shop there. He's a good man. And he's got good people working, you know, working there. And I told him, what kind of pie do you like? And he says, well, you can't go wrong with any pie. So that's the only way that I could figure, like, here and there, you know, bring him something. That's a wonderful Friend. testimony, Sister Marjorie. Hallelujah. I got another testimony, but I'll save that one for next week. Yeah, make sure you call in and tell us, okay? That's a big one, too. And thank you, Pastor Bill. Oh, bless you, sister. You are my Jeremiah. Your sister Marjorie, we love you too. Shabbat Shalom. Good night. Hallelujah. Isn't that a wonderful testimony, Saints? Man, whoo, she beside herself too. All right. Where are we at? Let's go to New York. 
347-347. This is Pastor Dow. You're on the Straight With You, the radio broadcast. How can I help you? How you doing? Shalom. Shalom. How you doing, Pastor? How was your day? I'm doing all right. Who am I speaking to? Are you speaking to Emmy? Emmy, I spoke. I called last Friday. Okay. How you doing? Everything all right. I can't complain. I'm just... I need some help, Pastor. I need some help, man. On my praying. My praying is very, very weak. Very weak. Where are you at, New York? I'm in the Bronx. Ain't you close to Junior? I have no idea, sir. I have no idea. Huh. Okay, but what you got? How can I help you, brother? Yeah, man. I, I, my, my praying is very weak, and, you know, I need some, some help. That's all. Some knowledge. You know, some deliverance. And that's about it. And, um... This, I read something, you know, it was a beautiful thing, Pastor. I read in um, the Wisdom of Solomon and the Apocrypha. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the second chapter, it was is it, a is a, a, a powerful scripture, and um, that I, even individuals I grew up around, even every probably you probably quoted quoted, quoted this to yourself. I like to read it to you, but let me hold. On, let me go get get to the scripture so I can read it. It's just amazing how you, how you can observe it, observe the scripture. There are there's Israelites on um, pastors over here, up here in New York. I know Junior is up there. Uh, how far are you from New Jersey? About 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Yeah, you, we got Brother Randy. Brother Randy and Brother Ron is there. Brother Ron is be up next on the phone call. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Good Israelites, solid brothers. Oh. All right, all right. So you, you have my number right there, right there? Yeah, let me make sure. Yeah, I got it right here. Yeah, is it all right if I give Brother Ron your phone number? Yes, yes, sir. All righty, I'll do that. Let me just read this um, scripture so I can let the other saints um, converse with you. The Wisdom of Solomon, the second chapter, the first verse, it said, For they reason unsoundly, saying to themselves, Short and sorrowful is our life, and there is no remedy when a man comes to his end, and no one has been known to return from hate. Mm. You don't, Pastor, you don't understand that? How, you know, probably you, probably you even said it, individuals you've been around with, well, how do you know how the people say, oh, you know, this life, life is short, you gotta enjoy it, you know, there's, this life is nothing, and and you know how when you could talk to an individual and, t- and talk to him about Christ, and they'd be like, "Come on, ain't nobody ever um, d- um, came back from his death." Look at it; he's calling it right here, Solomon. You're right. Look at it right here. That's that's deep. Right there, All right, Pastor Shabbat Shalom. You have a good evening, and um, tomorrow I'll be on via via uh, online. And give um the the brothers my number. I'll do that. Shabbat shalom. Shalom. Hallelujah. Let's go to New Jersey. Uh, brother Ron, call the number eight five six eight five six. How you doing, brother Ron? Shabbat shalom, Pastor. Shabbat shalom, Israel scattered abroad and scattered on Joe Farmel. And how are you tonight, Pastor? Doing well. Hey, uh, you're not in the chat room, are you? No, I'm not in the chat room on my cell phone. My laptop has been getting fixed for about months now. Wow. One thing is, is not one thing is about is another thing with that laptop. But um, they're going to uh, put another motherboard in it. I had them put a motherboard in it and went back the same day. So they sent it back and they're putting another one in it now. So I'm just waiting for 
and to get done. So I usually just call up and I uh, just sit in the queue and, and listen. Uh, if, if you ever see a number like uh, with a whole bunch of ones, yeah, up on your call list, that's me. Yeah, the theory does it too. brother. Good to hear you. Hallelujah. Um, about what you said earlier about dying your hair. Uh, you, now you know you can't dye your hair, Pastor. Because then you'd be hiding your crown. Ah, you got that right. Say that again, bro. <laughs> you know, so make sure you leave that there. Oh, I ain't, I ain't gonna oh, I die. Have, I have a, hallelujah. I have a question for you, Pastor. Um, Go ahead. It's not, it's, I, I guess it's more of a... Uh, in Genesis, when he made the covenant with, uh, with, with uh, Abraham, and he passed between between the, uh, the uh, land, the, the, the uh, sacrifice, the carcass of the sacrifice with, with Abraham, and, and, but he came in, in, in the similitude of... Um, of uh, let's see, what, it, what it looks like to me when I read it, it just reminds me of when he came down on the mount. Is did he come down in, the, in that similar too? But could you say like a smaller version? You know what I mean? No, no. A Abraham actually, yeah. A Abraham, brother, um, um, he actually saw the Messiah himself. Yep, because you have to understand. Remember this, brother. Yah is a spirit. And and no man has ever seen Yah in spirit and in live. Cause, and remember, the flesh is a veil. And so he uses the flesh to veil himself in. Uh, okay. So okay. when you heard Jesus telling those scribes and Pharisees in John 8, when he said, Abraham saw my day and he rejoiced. Then that's why them scribes and Pharisees got mad because they turned around and said, you mean you ain't even 50 years old and have you seen Abraham? And he replied and said, before Abraham was, I am. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, so you see, every time a prophet saw, every time a prophet saw uh, the Most High, it was Jesus that they saw. Yeah, in, in the flesh. That was the flesh form of him. Okay, 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 that brings so much clarity because I read it over and over again in so many different books about how, you know, when Jacob saw him and then, and then when, uh, you know, when uh, Isaiah saw him and, you know, woe is me for I've seen, I've seen the most high and, and I'm, uh, you know, I have unclean lips. So, this, so he revealed himself as Jesus Christ to almost every prophet Throughout the, throughout the scriptures. Right. They, as they knew who he was, but, you know, they didn't know him by the name Jesus because, you know, that is an English or that is a Greek or an offshoot of Greek, English, Roman name, if you understand what I mean. But they knew who he was. Oh, that is amazing. That is amazing. Uh, you know, okay. All right. Yeah, that's, and uh, also, I want to. Uh, I want to thank uh, Aldi Shane also for uh, the scripture study because that was uh, Pastor, he did it again, the most High did it again. I was just reading scripture, just reading scripture. Me and Brother Vernon were reading scripture on, on trees and trying to get understanding about trees for some reason. Don't got a clue why. We got our mind looking around on trees, but we're looking on trees. Next thing you know, it gives that teaching and it just added so many pieces to the puzzle so now we're just going to build off of that also uh, continue on with the spiritual warfare because I'm getting I'm getting beat down over here but I love all of you alright my uh, brother it's exposing all these devils so uh, Shabbat Shalom and I look forward to that um, I look forward to the uh, to the destruction of uh, uh, that, that's going to burn tomorrow 
Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Let's go to Texas. Brother Mitchell, caller number 281-281. How you doing, Brother Mitchell? I'm doing blessed, man. How about yourself? No, we doing all right. Blessed are the most high. Y'all doing well. How can I help you? Oh, no. Uh, I just wanted to uh, make a quick comment. Uh, I, I heard Brother Ron uh, he asked that question. And it's something that I've actually used. Uh, I got the question down here from some of the same, down here about the same thing, you know, uh, who did, you know, Abraham see or probably whatever. And uh, I gave this example before. Before the uh, before the more was destroyed, uh, if you go back in Genesis, this is for Brother Ron, whoever else, has never thought about this, but Abraham was under a tree. And it says that three men were uh, approaching. And he ran out to the study bottom, comes down to them, and he entreated them to come inside. Sarah uh, prepared them some food. And uh, the most house began to speak, and he said, uh, Should I tell Abraham what I'm going to do? Saying that through him and his feet, all the earth shall be blessed. And then some time after that, Two men walked away and went for Sodom and Gomorrah, but then it was just Abraham and the Most High speaking. And then that's whenever Abraham was beginning to ask him, hey, if there's 50 there all the way down to 10 or whatever, they're just they're right in the city, we need to destroy it. And so I always tell people, well, who was that? Because said three men, but in the end, it was his job and Abraham and the other one after the two men walked away. So I always try to get that example to show them that they, they, they've, they've always dealt with, you know, kings. No, yep. Uh, I just want to kind of share that. I just want to share that with people if they never, you know, kind of put two and two together right there. Whatever. So I just kind of want to share that. I, I had a question, but I always want to do some more digging into it, reading about it, uh, and have something to do with. Uh, and maybe you can try to answer this question. You know, I went over Joe a few times, and you, uh, and I heard you speak on it a little bit. Uh, but it always talks about. Uh, I know, like that, for instance, the three times here, you know, us men show up the for the most high. And you may, during the sermon, uh, the Shabbat message, you spoke about uh, uh, Satan being able to go before the Most High. Uh, and I, and I'm paraphrasing here, but I believe um, I believe uh, the Son of God before the Most High, and uh, Satan was also there. So my question was, uh, uh, the way I got it, what you said was that he was actually in heaven, uh, Satan was, and he asked him, where were you going? Going up and down on the, the earth and whatnot. Remember, uh, the Apostle Paul even gave us more insight. You remember he said that he was caught up to the third heaven. You remember that? Okay. All right, so we have the first heaven that we can see without literal eye. Then we have the second heavens, uh, which we can see, which we can't see. You know what I mean? And then we have another dominion, which is the spiritual realm where the father is. So Satan is the prince and power of the air. This earth belongs to him, but he has access to go back and forth. Because remember, he was cast down to this earth. Hello? Oh, look like we lost brother Mitchell. Yep, he dropped off on us. Yeah, but that's what happened. He got cast, Satan got, you know, he got cast down this earth, but he still did not lose access of going back and forth to the throne room and accusing the Father. I mean, accusing the, the saints of the Most High. Because, excuse me, his title is the accuser of the brethren. And that's exactly what he is. He is the accuser of the brethren. Um, and of course, now he's down here making war with the saints. And he's going to step up his wrath here before long because he knows that he has but a short time. Let's go to Tennessee, 615. 615 is Pastor Dow. How can I help you? Uh, hello? Am I on? You are on. Oh, okay. Hello, Pastor. Shalom. Um, I have a, hi, Shalom. I have a couple questions for you. Who am I speaking with? Um, you are speaking with Geneva. Geneva. Okay, good to meet you, Geneva. Thank you. Okay, the questions I have, the first one I have is what is, what is your perspective on King Selassie uh, and, the, and the Rastafari movement? 
is is he the last Hebrew king? Do you do you believe that to be accurate? No, no, I believe the last Hebrew king that we've seen on this earth was the Christ, the Messiah himself, Yahshua HaMashiach. Okay, so the Rastafarian movement would not be a truth movement then? No, because I don't read anywhere in the scriptures that tells us to be Rastafarian. We are Hebrews and we are Israelites. The scriptures doesn't teach us to okay. be Muslims. The scriptures does not teach us to be Christians, Baptists, Methodists, Apostolics, Messianics, Nazarenes, um, uh, Jehovah Witness, Seventh-day Adventists, Rastafarians, Buddhists, uh, Islam. The scriptures does not teach us to be any of that. Okay. We are Hebrews and we are Israelites. Okay. Because I was just wondering for one thing that, that was threw me off anyway was that they uh, used the supposed star of David. That is, a, that is a satanic star. That is not the star of David. People trying to call it the star of David, but that is a satanic star. That is not the star of David. I know that judgment has been committed unto the Father, and I don't know what's going to happen to them, except I do know this. Uh, if you love him, you're going to keep his commandments. And to know him, you're going to keep his commandments, because Ecclesiastes 12, 13 says, for let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yah and keep his commandments the whole duty of man. Jesus said in John 14, 15, if you love me, then you will keep my commandments. So there's a lot of people that say that they love him, and first John says, but they keep not his commandments. He said, I will show you a liar and the truth is not in him. So people say that they know Jesus, they love Jesus, but they yet they don't keep his commandments. They are a liar. Right, right. Definitely. I, but, you know, I just wonder because so many people have passed away and have been so misled well sister you know the scriptures teach us and the apocrypha that there'll be many that go into destruction and there'll be few that go into the path of righteousness uh -huh. I would say save yourself right and don't worry about anybody else just making sure you following the law, statutes, and you keeping the commandments, and and you repent of your sins, iniquities, and transgressions, and pray that you have a pastor that you can follow as he's following Christ. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, all right. I thank you for that. That's really all the, all the questions I have right now. All right. Good hearing from you. Take care of the baby. Yeah. Thank you. Shalom. All right, saints. Well, we'll see y'all. Be the Father's will. Uh, Shabbat morning. Um, I, I, I'm going to go ahead and sign off here tonight. I'm getting a little bit of weary here, so uh, according to the flesh. So, hey, I bless you all. Sweet, precious, strong. Victorious and mighty overcoming name with y'all. Sure. Shalom. Look at him looking.